Hey, this is Mark, aka Nectar Junkie, also Propeller Heads Junkie, Reason Junkie. Um, I am here focusing some tutorials on my Nectar P4, which is a new piece of equipment that I recently got paired with Propeller Heads Reason, uh, which I've been using for years with my favorite software. But what they've done with Nectar is unbelievable. I do not work for the company, uh, but I can tell you that if you are a Reason user and you don't have a Nectar, it's like operating on half cylinders. It's like driving a car with two wheels. Can't explain it more than that. The tutorial I'm gonna to do today is something to show you about how to really get into the equalizer on the SSL mixer and propeller heads in a way you really never could do um, to get real fine EQing. Uh, and so uh, you're gonna be, hopefully, you're, if you have a Nectar, you're gonna check this out and you'd be using this uh, capability. And if you don't have a Nectar, maybe this will push you over the edge to say, that's what, I need to get one of those. Look for more tutorials in the near future and I'm gonna jump right in. Oh yeah, a little bit before we get into this tutorial, who this is actually geared towards because I don't want to bore anybody, but first of all is you got to know something about propeller heads. Also, if you know about propeller heads really from an engineering standpoint, we're going to deal with some stuff that's heavily oriented around sound engineering in propeller heads using this tool, the Nectar. It's also not an introductory tutorial for the Nectar. It makes some assumptions that you know some stuff about the Nectar in general, but if you're looking to see how the Nectar works and you want to be impressed with some stuff, especially in knowing propeller heads, then this tutorial will hopefully show you that Nectar can do amazing things that you were never able to do uh, with any controller that I'm aware of or any combination of controllers that you could put together. Once again, I don't work for Nectar, but I love Nectar. Uh, so here we go. Just one second, I want to tell you that this is not an intro tutorial for the Nectar. However, you can see the power of it um, by watching what I'm going to do. Uh, this isn't a breaking into how your Nectar works. Just take it to understand that the Nectar controls every parameter of reason. So if I move this slider here, it's going to move on screen. This, if I move the pan knob here, all of these channels are assigned to various channels in there. Um, I'm going to be working with a piece that is just a few tracks uh, in reason um, that I was working on earlier today um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a mix of the EQ and I'm going to be EQing this on the SSL mixer and I'm going to do it all without ever touching the mouse or the keyboard and I'm going to do it in a way that you've never that, uh, been able to do something like this before. Um, so before I get into it I'm going to go over a couple of the concepts that made me realize how easy that this is to do. So first of all I want you to check out what's on screen. It's very important the screen here tells you um, everything that you're going to need to know and you can see everything that's going on by, by doing this. These buttons here along the bottom you can see that I just hit button number one, it transferred to uh, channel number one in the mixer, and you can see it's got the name Shaker Tops, which corresponds to the Shaker Tops that I have there. Um, if I click on channel two, it's the pots and pans, as I've listed there. If I have uh, go on through, you know, the toms, the piano line, and all of that stuff. So you can see there's a very visual interface that shows me uh, what track I have selected and what track that, um, that I'm working with. An interesting thing as well is that there's a button here at the end that toggles between what this bottom button will do for you. And right up here you can say I just changed it. It says button mode. It went to mute. And now button mode went to solo. And now button mode went back to select. So let's go over to one of the other modes real quick. And I'm going to mute track one. And you can see that track one, the shaker tops, muted itself. Um, if you go through to uh, a mute on, on uh, the second channel, you can see that, um, that that is the one that muted. But you'll notice that the selected channel that I can be working with is still the Tom's channel. So basically you toggle between these and now if I hit the select button that you can see that the Tom's light is still lit up. Okay, so my Tom's would be the ones that I was working with. Um, and then here I'm going to change the selection and I have shaker um, the shaker tops selected um, and then let's say and you know I would notice that my mutes are on Okay, so I go back to the mute mode and turn them off. So let's do that um, You know I'm speaking over the music as it's playing, but let's check that out what I just did. So here we go We have this and you know, here's our shaker tops and I want to go ahead and I want to mute out um, I want to mute them out and see what it sounds like Got the mute there. Okay, gonna mute out a couple of other things. Muted out channel number two, the pots and the pans. Muted out the toms, and I only want to hear the piano line, and you know, you can either mute or solo. So I'm gonna 
undo those mutes, and I'm gonna change my mode again. So now I see in here, and remember, I have not touched the keyboard yet, and I have not gone in and touched anything in Reason, and I'm doing all this activity just at the touch of my hands right here. All right, so I wanna solo the piano, okay? So, soloing the piano. All right, so now I say, okay, what I'm here to do is I'm also here to EQ the system. So I'm going to stop playing the music for a second here, and I'm going to discuss a little bit else a uh, way that um, the Nectar works. Um, when you're selecting a channel itself, you'll notice that there are the various activities that I can do. I can do my EQ, my dynamics, my inserts, my sends, or the global menu for this channel. Now those apply to the channel that I have selected. So that is right now, they're applied to the shaker tops. Now I want to be working with the piano, so I got to remember, you know, okay, I got to remember to uh, go in into the select and I'm going to go ahead and select the piano line. It gives you the indicator on here on the screen that it's indicated as red. Um, you can also read it up top. Um, there have been occasions when I've thought that I was working in uh, one of the other channels um, and I, I, but you very quickly realize what's going on. Um, so now in order to work with the various properties of the piano line, which I have selected, then I use the these five buttons here and they control the menus to go into um, various properties. So when I click onto the EQ, then you can see that I have now my screen has changed and I have dials and the dials correspond to these dials over here. And the, um, the, the dials are all related to the things that you see on the screen. So now if you check out, um, and this is up here, and I'm not doing a screencast because I don't have the ability to do screencast and the camera at the same time, and I've got to really focus on what's going on down here. So I'll point up here. There I'm changing the low, low frequency down on there, and you can see that I'm doing it here, and then low middle frequency I'm changing. The knobs all correspond. Uh, I, I've gotten really to the point where I don't really look at the screen very much anymore. Or, um, I'm doing so much work down here. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm not going to do a great job of EQing this right now. It's it's not really totally the point. Um, but you know we can do this here, and I'm going to cut all the low gain, all the middle gain. You know, get really tinny sounding piano there. Get that in there. You know, I've turned my high gains up. All right. You know, obviously I don't want that. So I'm going to bring back some of the lows and. You know, you you get the point in here. And um, also, of course, at this point, the mixer still works. Even though I'm not seeing it, you can see I just slid up um, the mixer. So, you know, I'm just in gains and doing the mixer here at the same time. All right. And so something that I found out uh, just recently is that this time I toggle this and I see I get my mutes and my solos while I'm in my EQ. So this is so convenient because now I've, I've done some EQ modification and I want to see how it falls into the mix. I can hear it isolated and see how it falls into the mix. I am going to just combine it with the uh, other, um, other uh, non-drum instruments, you know, using my solos. Say, make sure to get my violins in there. So say now, oh, it's really not sitting in with the violins. You know what? I don't like the way that the violins are corresponding with this. So I'm gonna just get the, just solo it out right there. I got the uh, piano and the violins alone together. And I've got a comparison side by side with them. And you know what? I'm just gonna work on the violin alone first. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo on the violin. And now, if you remember, I want to select the violin track to start working with. So I'm still in the EQ window. I haven't done anything about that, but now if I press the button and I go over to the violins, I get all the violin settings. So now I can say, okay, I'm going to cut the lows on them as well. And I really want to boost my high middles and I want to change the Q on that. And let's just say there, we've got the, you know, we've got those highs in there. I know this is like a crappy mix that I'm putting together right here, um, but our goal then, I'm going to go and toggle and um, I'm back in, uh, in the solo and then I'm going to grab the, uh, the piano back into it, soloed my piano back in with it, let's just get a mix. Oh, my screen went black because I'm not using it, so I'm just going to click my mouse the only time in this whole video. Okay, get those falling together, 
Okay, now let's bring the other instruments that are the... Um... Man, I'm gonna solo out this bass. Now that's the bass synth, and you can hear it's not very bassy at all. A little bass there, but I wanna get all the highs out of that thing. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back into the toggle here. Remember that I've gotta select the guy um, because he's not selected right now. I've still got the violins. You can see the word violins there. It tells me that my EQ is on the violins. I wanna get it into these bass, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and cut all the highs out of there. And, and also, I've only been let resting on this one menu, and of course we know that we've got the other parameters of EQ uh, that come along with Reason. Um, this menu, you'll notice, has changed. Now this menu has things that are associated with EQing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a, um, a low-pass filter on this guy. So I'm gonna turn my low-pass filter on, and it tells me that the, the filters are, um, that they're on, and I'm gonna turn my low-pass filter on, and I'm gonna boost it there. And now I'm gonna go back to work with my, um, I'm gonna go back to work with the actual, um, gonna get some more bass in there. See, deeper bass, I'm just gonna boost this a little bit. I'm kind of breaking all kinds of rules of sound and EQ, and I totally know that. Uh, I'm very, uh, I usually cut everything, but I'm just doing this as an example of what you can do. So don't take this as, hey, I'm a lousy mixer, um, and it's just the example. Okay, so we've got, you know, I'm like, okay, we've got something going on here. It kind of probably sounds like crap, but um, now I want to go ahead and uh, pull out the solos. And you know what? Let's just pull out the solos and get the drums in too. Let's make believe that I like that. Um, now, everything that you would want to do in a mix, we're back. I just switched the view on this to go to the to the main mixer. If we wanted to do the same thing with the compressor off of uh, the SSL, we could do exactly the same thing. You'll notice now I'm in the compressor mode. I'm on the bass synth track. Now these will turn on the compressor for this bass track. Um, and I'm gonna turn the threshold way down and just squash crap out of it. Um, so all the parameters do the same thing. Um, buttons for turning on the peak, um, you know, the gate, I can switch over to the gate. Now I'm the gate, now I'm the compressor. Move back to the mixer mode um, and I can work on my inserts. Remember, oh, I wanna work with the inserts for the violin channel, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to Select mode, I'm gonna select my violin channel and I've got my four rotaries there. I don't have anything assigned to this right now, but I could turn them on and off, these guys. So, that is my quick tutorial, or not so quick, I can be a little bit wordy, but um, unbelievable that I have this ability to control these things, listen to ABA side by side with the press of a button with my hands. Um, I uh, am a, a original in-studio uh, engineer, player, producer, and then when Reason came out, I said, boy, man, I can do everything, and it reminds me of the studio. It is my studio, but I had to use the mouse button, and now I have my hands on the controls. Um, Nectar, I love you. Uh, Reason, I love you too, and uh, look for more of these. Um, hopefully this has been intriguing for you, and hopefully if you are a Nectar user and didn't realize some of this stuff about how you can navigate um, while you're doing, um, you know, change the, uh, the, the select, the mute, and the solo while you're within the parameters um, and get that side-by-side, -side, you know, the EQ flavoring, um, that is just, to me, just absolutely stellar. Um, and that's it for today. Nectar Junkie, a.k.a. Mark Underhill. Either way you go, out.